Good evening and welcome. It's Sunday, the 20th of February. And it helps when you forget, when you remember to plug the microphone in. Let's take a moment and just come before the Lord in prayer. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Come, bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord, you that by night stand in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands towards the sanctuary and bless the Lord, the Lord who made heaven and earth give you blessing out of Zion. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. Psalm 147 Praise the Lord! How good it is to sing praises to our God! How pleasant and fitting to praise him! The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the exiles of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of the stars and calls them each by name. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. His understanding has no limit. The Lord sustains the humble but casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with grateful praise. Make music to our God on the harp. He covers the sky with clouds. He supplies the earth with rain and makes grass grow on the fields. He provides food for the cattle and for the young ravens when they call. His pleasure is not in the strength of the horse, nor his delight in the legs of the warrior. The Lord delights in those who fear him, who put their hope in his unfailing love. Extol the Lord, Jerusalem. Praise your God, Zion. He strengthens the bars of your gates and blesses your people within you. He grants peace to your borders and satisfies you with the finest of wheat. He sends his command to the earth. His word runs swiftly. He spreads the snow like wool and scatters the frost like ashes. He hurls down hail like pebbles. Who can withstand his icy blast? He sends his word and melts them. He stirs up his breezes and the waters flow. He has revealed his word to Jacob, his laws and decrees to Israel. He has done this for no other nation. They do not know his laws. Praise the Lord. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 to chapter 2, verse 3. In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty, Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, let there be a vault between the waters to separate water from water. So God made the vault and separated the water under the vault from the water above it. And so it was. God called the vault sky, and there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the water under the sky be gathered to one place, and let dry ground appear. And it was so. God called the dry ground land and the gathered waters he called seas. And God saw that it was good. 
Then God said, Let the land produce vegetation, seed-bearing plants and trees on the land that bear fruit with seed in it, according to their various kinds. And it was so. The land produced vegetation, plants bearing seed according to their kinds, and trees bearing fruit with seed in it according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening and there was morning, the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the vault of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them serve as signs to mark sacred times and days and years, and let them be lights in the vault of the sky to give light on the earth. And so it was. God made two great lights, the greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. He also made the stars. God set them in the vault of the sky to give light on the earth to govern the day and the night, and to separate light from darkness. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, Let the water teem with living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the vault of the sky. So God created the great creatures of the sea, and every living thing with which the water teems, and that moves about in it according to their kinds, and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them and said, Be fruitful, and increase in number, and fill the water in the seas, and let the birds increase on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the land produce living creatures according to their kinds, the livestock, the creatures that move along the ground and the wild animals, each according to its kind. And so it was so. God made the wild animals according to their kinds and the livestock according to their kinds, and all the creatures that move along the ground according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God he created them. Male and female he created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Then God said, I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food. And to all the beasts of the earth and all the birds in the sky and all the creatures that move along the ground, everything that has breath of life in it, I give every green plant for food. And so it was. God saw all that he had made, and it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. By the seventh day God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day he rested from all his work. Then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us rejoice and exult and give glory and homage to our God. Salvation and glory and power belong to our God, whose judgments are true and just. Praise our God, all you his servants, all you who fear him, both small and great. The Lord our God, the Almighty, reigns. Let us rejoice and exult and give him the glory. For the marriage of the Lamb has become, has come, and his bride has made herself ready. Blessed are those who are invited to the wedding banquet of the Lamb. To the one who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honour and glory and might for ever and ever. Amen. Let us rejoice and exult and give glory and homage to our God. 
Matthew chapter 6, verse 25 to 34. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they are? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labour or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendour was dressed like one of these. If that's how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is the strength of my life. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is the strength of my life. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. The Lord is the strength of my life. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is the strength of my life. You have done great things, O God, and holy is your name. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember the promise, his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. You have done great things, O God, and holy is your name. Father, we thank you for this day, for a day in which we have celebrated the resurrection of your Son, gathered together around your table, received the blessing of communion. Lord, we thank you that every day is blessed by you, just as it was when you first created the world. We thank you that that same creative power is still present in our world. Lord, we pray tonight for this creation, for the peace of the world. For the knowledge that the world is yours and everything in it, that we have a responsibility to be caretakers, to treat this world with the respect, respect that 
acknowledges your ownership. That even though you gave the world to mankind, you gave it to us to look after, not to exploit. So Father, we pray tonight that the governments, that the businesses of the world would unite, would take seriously the issues around climate change, would make good the the actions that were promised at COP26 and other such conferences. And Lord, as we await the arrival of yet another storm, we pray for the protection of life, for the protection of property, but we pray also that we may acknowledge that the, the source of these storms, the source of these changing weather patterns is our own greed, our own lack of care for the creation. To help us as individuals to take seriously our part, to think about how we use the resources around us and how we could better use those resources to cut our carbon footprint, to produce less waste, to be more mindful of the impact we have upon this world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, praying for peace. We obviously think tonight of Ukraine as fears continue to grow about war in that country. As the president of Ukraine travels around trying to prevent a Russian invasion as Russia itself denies any plans to invade the Ukraine. Lord, we pray for peace. We pray for diplomacy. We pray for the sabre rattling to stop. For the bullying to end, for the sovereign will of individual nations to be respected, Lord in your mercy hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the people who are on our hearts and minds tonight. For those we know who are ill, who are lonely, who are struggling in different ways. We pray for those who have died recently and will be coming to church or to crematoria the family of Jean Baxter and Sylvia Cottrell.
Father, we pray for those who are dealing with the the invasive therapy that goes with cancer. For Margaret, for June Cottrell, who will soon undergo surgery and chemotherapy for her cancer. We pray for those whose lives have been changed by disease or by injury. We pray for Shoe, 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 Sue Shakespeare, who recently suffered a stroke. For Olive Taylor's brother, Ian, who has been diagnosed with motor neurone disease. We pray for Karen and Sheila, for Marianne, for Amy and Effie. For all who live with debilitating illness, for Leah and Kev. For those whose prognosis is long term, for whom there is no cure but there is just a, a way to live with their conditions. Father, we pray for the strength, the resilience, the mental capacity and endurance to be able to carry on and to live life to the fullest. We pray for those who are awaiting surgeries and other medical intervention for Graham as he waits for his kidney transplant for Philip as he waits for his knee surgery. We pray for those who have recently had unwelcome diagnosis as well as for those who have been living with diagnosis for some time. We pray for June Hawley, her physical needs and her housing needs. We pray for Josh Idden and all like him who face a lifetime of taking medication and the side effects of that medication. We pray for Effie. We pray for those who care for and give care to those who have long-term illnesses or long-term conditions that mean they need constant care. We pray for Jack Gardner and for his mum Linda as Jack goes into supported living Lord, we pray that that would be a positive step for both of them, that Jack would find a good home, that he and Linda would be able to enjoy their relationship without the stress of having to live together. We pray for those who are recovering from recent operations, for Evangeline as she recovers from her eye operation, corneal transplant, that her sight would be fully restored. We pray for those who we know only by name but perhaps don't know their circumstances. For Mabel Rose, for the sister of Julie Brooks, for Gillian, Luke and Simon.
Father, we pray for those who are simply getting older, who may have been left alone. We pray for those who are isolated or feel cut off because they are confined to their homes. Father, we pray for friendship. We pray for comfort and solace in the times of loneliness. Lord, we pray for the families we know who seem to have more than their fair share of stress and strain, for Sue Palin and for her family, for Georgie and Leah and Dawn and Jason and Chris and for Dean in Cornwall for all of their needs, which you know better than we do, Lord. And you are able to provide according to your riches in glory for them and for all that we lift to you tonight. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, give us reverence for all creation and respect for every person that we may mirror your likeness in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Using the words our Saviour gave us, we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining me this evening. We will be back for Compline at 10pm tonight. Look forward to joining with you then to finish off the day. Tomorrow we will have morning prayer, but there will be no evening prayer tomorrow, Monday the 21st. There will be Compline. Have a good evening. Stay safe. <laughs>